Hey everybody, it's your old pal Chuck, and I am back with another review, and this one's going to be a little bit different because we are taking a look at the Transformers HasLab Victory Saber set. Um, now, for those of you who maybe are under a rock or didn't catch it, this is a HasLab set. It was made to order, cost about $179. That may be the cost after tax and shipping but seeing as how there's no way you guys were getting nobody was getting this without paying tax and shipping uh that's part of the price if it's not then it's actually probably closer to like 184 if not closer to 200 dollars. regardless this was a made to order figure you had to put your order in hasbro held on to your money for a year and a half and then shortly before christmas uh they were started sending these out now, I am not going to go through mo uh, each individual figure and mode. I've done transformation videos that will show you all that in detail. This is just giving you my opinion. And there's going to be two themes to this video. Number one, masterpiece pricing, generations style quality. And number two, and this is, comes from uh, a few people, a few of my buddies on Sabertron, a lot of small issues that can add up and leave you feeling a little wanted, wanting. And let me just start off with the, the positives. It is fantastic that in 2022, we have a generation style Star Saber Victory Leo figure that is playable, that you can handle, that didn't cost you an arm and a, well, didn't cost you the price of the vintage toy that could break down, have yellowing plastic, or stuff of that nature. Even though, actually, unfortunately, some people have gotten these sets with yellowing plastic and broken joints. Um, but again, um, the transformation is fun. Uh, that's actually the, the best part of the figure, is transforming Victory Saber through its uh, excuse me star saber through all its modes transforming the saber jet uh handling transforming victory leo victory leo was a real surprise of this set i think a little more care and attention went into it than it needed to be because at the end of the day victory leo's sole existence is to be boots and a cape for star saber um that the quality of plastic um well, I shouldn't say the quality of plastic because it's the same quality as any other generation's figure, even though you're paying a masterpiece price point. But um, there is a lot of heft. I mean, Star Saver is, is a very heavy figure. That's something I noticed right away taking it out of the box. There's like a lot of meat there. It's not as hollow as other figures, and you feel it. It's, you know, supportive in your hand. Unfortunately, that's where the positives are going to have to end because then we start getting into the negatives. Right off the bat, um, two major things with Star Saber that had they been more clearly uh, defined and explained by Hasbro in the run-up to the release of the figure, I would have canceled my order. Um, I probably would have had to go to my credit card and accuse Hasbro of bait and switching and mis doing a misleading product because in a way, that's what they did. And that has to do with the sword. Number one, this sword blade is nowhere near as big as it should be. Uh, you know, Star Sa as somebody said, Star Saber is a swordsman. With this, it's more like he's a daggerman. Um, number two, the one of the core things to Star Saber that is indicative of the character is the way he draws the blade. And it comes out of the backpack, over the shoulder, that is every episode. Like that is Star Saber. That is the 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 key to the animation. The original G one toy that was like a gimmick of the toy, snapping the blade into uh, the hilt, the blade into the hilt and drawing it out. That was it. That is not here. Um, they I th I think they explained they were trying to do something different or there was a design thing because they had it because again. This has to. Fit. This is a legacy figure. I don't know if it's legacy, legacy evolution, where it's supposed to fit, but this is a legacy figure. 
And of course, they have to have it with the gimmicks of a legacy figure, which makes absolutely no sense since the vast majority of people who are going to buy a legacy product don't have, are not going to have this figure. Hello, Delilah. Thank you for joining us. Um, number, so the blade stores in the side of the leg. And if that sounds kind of weird to you, um, that actually is how King Excisor from Brave would store the blade. So I wonder if there was like a bit of confusion since Excisor and Star Saber both bear a resemblance since I think they were being designed at the same time. Or it's like a little wink and a nod. Either way, that does not work out. Delilah, do not start eating Star Saber. Do not eat those wings. <laughs> uh, so, uh, of course, now everything's going to be taken uh, lightly because here comes here's Delilah blocking the view. So I don't know exactly what they were thinking there. The other thing is, it's the hilt. As you know, on the original toy... The hilt was the was the nose cone of Saber. Um, that is something that was even included on the Masterpiece figure. What was also included on the Masterpiece figure was a smaller animation accurate hilt that, if you look in the cartoon, is about the same, was scaled to be the right size to for Saber to handle. Because otherwise, the sword would be hitting and would be blocked by the wrist cuffs. And that's what we have here, because there is no wrist articulation. You really can't do any of the proper animation style sword posing. Now you can place the blade in the nose cone as the original G1 toy did, but that's actually somewhat hard to do. And I've heard of people actually breaking the clips on the blade doing that. So the fact that everything that was core to Star Saber. The way he handled the sword, the way the sword should move was not done at a, you know, a HasLab made-to-order figure, that's unacceptable. And I would have canceled my order. That's how serious I am about it. Um, moving on. Uh, little quibbles here and there. The arm articulation is not all it's cracked up to be. I mean, again, you can't really get a lot of great sword posing out of it. Um, there are some extra hidden joints in the shoulders, as we've seen, and those do help, actually, in getting the arm up to pose the V-lock cannon. But here's my other issue. When in Victory Saber mode, if you want to pose the V-lock cannon forward, you basically have to fold down the shoulder laser, use the armpit joint to swing the arm forward, rotate it up, and swing it back. The original toy, the G1 toy, did this so much better. They worked in a design where you could rotate the lion paws around, that there would be a groove for that laser to sit in, just so you would be able to point the laser forward. Because they, on that toy, don't forget, that was a, this was a spring-loaded weapon. So I guess they even knew back then they had to make sure that it could do its bare function of firing a small missile at, at another toy. So there's that. You're, you're supposed to be able to do two-handed sword poses. Um, I could not pull that off using all the joints because it's actually a double butterfly joint. And a lot of that has to do with the design of the hilt. Um on the masterpiece, on the G1 toy, the peg that the, would go into the hand would flip down and out, or you know, and lock into place. This it telescopes, and because they had to give it some nice little braiding to make it aesthetically pleasing, as it goes into the hole in the hand, it's naturally going to compress up on itself. So it's very difficult to get that whole the extended uh, grip of the sword all the way through the hands so you can do a proper two-handed pose. So that's completely negated. Below the waist, the articulation is pretty good. Um, you do have some limited ankle pivot, but the hips, the knees are on ratchets, and it feels really good. Um, as you can see, I have it on the stand. I only have it on the stand just for the sake of uh, this video. I don't like the stand. 
the plastic, which is clear, is incredibly flimsy. Now, some people have said, well, it's a stand. The purpose of the stand is to just put the figure on and stand it there. That's true. But what it shouldn't do is, like, at the slightest bit of vibration, start to wobble like you think the plastic's going to collapse on itself, which I do believe that over time, from the weight of the figure, this center piece right here that the figure's pegged into will collapse in on itself. It'll probably fold in and launch a piece of plastic out. Like the leg of a rosin chair, if you sit on it the wrong way and it gives out underneath you, yeah, I've been there. Um, other than that, uh, another minor quibble, but it again, it adds up. There is no locking point for the lasers on Star Saber's helmet. Um, it go, when it going out is fine. Going in is the problem. Because for the vehicle mode, or if you want some G1 toy accuracy, these should be facing straight up. There's no locking point there. So you end up overbending and what have you. And there's a good chance you could break it over time. With, also, with that being said, I would have, wouldn't have minded that they somehow replicated the, the helmeting uh, process from the Masterpiece figure with the hook. Again, we're paying Masterpiece prices for getting generation-style quality. Um, and to me, that just really bothers me. And you know what's also bothering me is this damn... I was fiddling with the arm. There we go. You know, these little wings. I mean... See, it's just that if I didn't have to move the armpit joint around, I wouldn't have knocked that in. So there's that. Now, moving over to Victory Leo. Victory Leo, I think, got a lot, most of the attention. And which is kind of funny when you consider that, again, all Victory Leo's sole existence is to be a new pair of boots and a cape for Star Saber, because that was the style back in Japan. That you would instead you would, instead of having when you have figures combined, instead of being a new character, it was just a powered up form of an existing character, and it does it really well. Transforming from robot to Leo to the flight mode, the lion to the flight mode is great. Um, you know, I know people have had problems with the face cover, with the horns falling, the tusks falling off. Thankfully, I haven't had those issues. By the way, do not peg the face cover into the bottom of the jaw. It is very tight and very hard to get out. And I feel that's one of the easiest ways to break the whole thing. But, you know, I mean, that's really my only complaint is that that, that face covering is a little tight. Now, I did mention in the transformation video that my figure does have some... Uh, a, a problem with the uh, transformation joint to form the boot that on one leg part of the plastic has been marred and that in robot mode it doesn't lock into place properly unless you're you know handling it in a certain way where you're applying the proper pressure to move the legs out to the side which you know works well other than that all of the the gimmicks of the figure are still there the Vic, the V-lock cannon can hang off the side you can move the shoulder, the V lasers to its forearm. It, it's fun. It's really nice. And, you know, it's a shame that I do know a lot of people have had problems with Victory Leo. And then we get to the whole combination. And again, this is where I have the most fun. The most fun with this figure is transforming it, is going from uh, Saber to Star Saber. Victory Leo to the Lion to this flying mode, combining it into the uh, the Victory Saber shuttle the spaceship, and then splitting Victory Leo down to create the boots and the cape for Star Saber to become Victory Saber. Um, and again, the, the you know the artic because Star Saber is the core, you have the same level of articulation. So the, below the legs is great, above the legs not so much. You know, like I mentioned, you have to finagle the arm to get it upright. And, you know, some people aren't going to have a problem with that. But again, masterpiece price point, generation style quality. And I think that's, you know, and, and a lot of people have mentioned the underside of these lasers being hollow. That doesn't bother me that much. 
Um, it would have been nice that it wasn't. I mean, I when I saw that preview video, the figure looked a lot more hollow than it is now. So I think they did cover up a lot. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. I mean, it, it's 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 just that you and I think to wrap it up, there's nothing here that says to me this could not have been sold at retail. Take out the take out the Micro Masters, which, by the way, if you, if you notice you haven't seen them, yeah, I haven't taken them out of the packaging. Apparently, the molds have degra degraded so much that Holly, the little police car, the legs pop off if you look at it the wrong way. That was a waste, a complete and total waste. That plastic could have gone into giving us a bigger sword blade, giving us wrist articulation closing up the hollowness under those guns, um, working something out that the arms could bend forward while holding the V-lock cannon, um, naturally and normally without having to fold down the laser. I mean, anything like that. Um, so take that out. Take out the blast effects. Yeah, you see, I haven't brought out the blast effects. It's the same bla cheap blast effects that we got in Siege that we now know if you leave them attached to the figure, it mars the plastic of the figure, mars the paint, and also... They're warped in the packaging. Come on. Mattel with uh, Battle Armor He-Man, and I even think the upcoming Thunder Punch He-Man, they use a, a thicker, stronger, solid plastic blast effect. Yeah, it's heavy, but you know what? I'd rather it be heavy uh, and than coming out warped and marring plastic. But again, in terms of like the transformation, the extra joints, I don't see any of this. Star Saber could have been a Commander class figure. Victory Leo could have been the next in the long line of the undersized leaders. I just don't see the price value. And it's especially when you add in these little quibbles here and there. And yes, I will be contacting Hasbro about my Victory Leo because, you know, I bet I, I, I'm going to get my money's worth. So there is that. I mean, this is a nice figure. That should have been a great, should have been a fantastic, should have been a superb figure. This should have been the greatest Transformer ever in history. And it's not. I mean, this is something that people have been waiting a long time for. And we better never see again. I mean, 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, if Hasbro thinks people are going to take it if they try to put out a Star Saber and Victory Leo after getting us to do this whole Victory, uh, this whole HasLab thing, they better be ready for war. Let me just say that. Now, to, to buy or not to buy, um, I'll say it right now off the bat. If you were not did not back this originally, you better be prepared to pay upwards of $300, and as time goes on, closer to $500 to get this figure. Haslabs appreciate in value, not depreciate. Just take a look at all the Marvel Legends, Galactus, Sentinel, Look at Unicron, Java Sail Barge. You know, they go up. Um, if you have no connection to this character and just want, like, a fun figure, don't bother. I, I, I mean, there's really just no point to uh, buying it because it's spending that much money, especially when you're going to have to spend extra. Um, it, it, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I can't. I mean, people are pay are charging extra because they're trying to make their money back on the cost of what they paid, and a little something come out ahead. So that's what they're doing. So when you factor that in, that's what those prices are. But over time, yeah, the the price is going to appreciate even more. So there's that. I mean, if you really want it, if for whatever reason you missed out on the uh, the fu the the funding period. Just be prepared to pay for it, but understand you're getting it. You're going to be paying like double a masterpiece price for a generation's quality figure uh, with a lot of small quibbling issues that when you start looking at what you paid, you don't think is you're probably not going to think is worth it. Now, for a lot of you, you're going to put this figure on a shelf and it's going to be nice to look at. And that's fine if you just put it on a shelf. It'll look fine. Um, but I see we're closing in on almost 20 minutes, and I think that's about all I want to say. I, I, hopefully I've given you enough to think about. Um, 
you know, I mean, I didn't even touch on the history of Star Saber, the fact that, yeah, this is based on the RX-78-2, and having now several RX-78-2 figures and kits, I really can see it, where, what they did, and how much of that design was there, and I think it's kind of cool. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I really have not much, I hope I've given you enough to think about. I hope I'm if give, I hope I've been able to help you transform it. I hope I've been able if you want to try to get it on the secondary market. I've given you stuff to think about, and I hope I've given you some stuff to look out for if you own this. Um, so that's about it. If you like this video, if you like the transformation videos, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Uh, that will help uh with the algorithms and communicating to youtube that these videos should be promoted i know it's the holiday season video views tend to go down unfortunately the news cycle on this figure has pretty much died up that's what happens when people get stuff illegally and early the news cycles become quote smaller and smaller so it's basically your support helping small reviewers like me continue to get product like this and bring it to you um, if you want to make the ultimate sign of support, I do have a Patreon, www.patreon.com slash chuckdog1999. All I ask for is a dollar a month, $12 a year. No thrills, no tears, no special rewards. All you're doing is helping me, help you to help me, help you bring figures like Victory Saber to you, as well as keeping up the infrastructure of the channel. We are in the post-Christmas season. Maybe you got some Christmas money, 12 bucks, that's the whole year, and you, and you really do help, help me out. But as I always say, I know times are tough. We're in a recession. Maybe you didn't get the Christmas money that you thought you were. You didn't get that Christmas bonus. They gave you like a syrup of the month uh, coupon or something. I completely understand. Uh, your views are more than thanks enough. And I'll be here no matter what. My other channels are thinking about winding down. I'm not going anywhere. And I'll be here to pick up the slack. So once again, Merry Christmas, everybody. I know it's December 26th as I'm filming this. I just filmed the transformation video. So again, Merry Christmas. You'll probably see this on the 27th. Uh, and I hope to speak to you again before the new year. So this is your old pal Chuck for Victory Saber. We will see you next time.